speed, agility, and incredible footage in a drone under 250 grams. It's not easy as it sounds, but the results are totally worth it. This drone comes in at 249 grams, has an O3 air unit for excellent 4K footage, uses a 6S battery, and it can even be programmed over Bluetooth from your phone. I will show you how I made this ultra light, high performance drone, the challenges I faced, and how you can build one too. I hope you stick around, because this is going to be awesome. Alright, so for this build, I'll be using the Siren F3 split frame from Quadmula, the P1604 2850k V motors from T Motor, an F405 20x20 flight stack from SpeedyB, a 6 cell 650 million power battery from Tattoo, the DJI O3 air unit, and 3016 props from HQ Prop. Let's get these parts unboxed. First, I start with the frame. Here I unpack the quadrocopter arms and the mounting hardware for a camera. Then I unwrap the top, middle, and bottom plates and begin screwing in the stack screws that'll hold the flight computer and the speed controller to control the motors. And then I lock the arms in place and secure them between the middle and lower plates. Next, I add 20 and 25mm standoffs to the bottom plate and the middle plate. These will be used to hold the top plate. Then I secure the speed controller and solder the capacitor and battery leads to the pad. Then I take out the DJI O3 air unit and secure it to the frame. Then I use a 3D printed part to hold the O3's antenna. Then this is mounted to the rear standoffs. At this point, the drone is coming together very well. I decide to put it on the scale and check its weight. At this point in the build, I was very optimistic at reaching the goal. Little did I know, I had a lot of challenges ahead of me. The next portion of the build was all about soldering. Each motor has three wires, which means three pads. All in all, I have four motors, which means I had to solder 12 pads perfectly for everything to work correctly. The best way I found to doing this was by first mounting the motor, then taking the wire and wrapping it behind the standoff. Then I knew how much wire I needed and would cut off the extra. Then I would tin the wire, tin the pad, and solder the wire. Then I would repeat this 11 more times. With the first soldering portion completed, I wanted to test my work. I tried powering on the drone with a smoke stopper, although it would not power on. At this point I was very worried that I might have shorted something, so I tried selling the stack for smoke. The issue was actually user error on my part for not turning on the smoke stopper. I wrongfully assumed that electricity was flowing when it indeed was not. I tried again with turning the smoke stopper on and everything powered on perfectly. That's perfect. Okay, it works. And then I had to solder the DJI O3 to the flight computer. These pads were absolutely tiny, and it was nearly impossible for me to solder to them. But somehow, I was able to get it done. Testing again with the smoke stopper revealed no issues, which meant I could proceed to programming. To connect the drone to my computer, I simply used a USB-C cable, which was recognized by Betaflight, and allowed me to program the drone. First, I turned on MSP on UR1, so the flight controller can talk to the O3 air unit. Then I turned on Serial RX on UR2, so I can use DJI O3 air unit as my receiver. Then I turned on MSP on UR4, so I can use the Bluetooth feature on my flight controller. And then I went to the Modes tab and set a range for ARM. I set this to AUX4 on my flight controller. Then I also created a range for Horizon mode in case I wanted to use the gyroscope on my drone. Then I went to the motors tab to set up motor directions and save my settings. Now it was finally time to close up the frame and begin preparing for the first flight.
Eyes up here, I can see forever and 